Hey guys, it's Parker Hatcher. I am here with my partner who's smiling uncontrollably. Um, it is our two year anniversary. This is Faith. Hi. Hey, so uh, today's topic is random. And that's not really a topic. So we decided to sort of talk about something that's really personal to us and that um, we've been having a lot of problems with lately. Okay, um, some of you may or may not know this, but both of us suffer from disabilities. Um, if you've been following me at all, which, okay, this- Eyebrows! I just want to get this done. You said to me- We both have, um, disabilities. I have lupus. It's an illness that is really affecting me in a, in a very strong way. And, uh, Faith has, uh, an autoimmune illness and, uh, a chronic pain disease. Unfortunately, there are people that are very ignorant and um, pig-headed, and we've been dealing with a lot of that kind of crap, especially since I started my fundraiser. It's time that we talk a little bit about that, you know, explain the, the kind of shit we've been going through the last little while and how ridiculous it is. Basically, the reason we decided to do this video is because um, some of the stuff we were experiencing very recently, um, if you're disabled and you're open about it on social media and whatnot, there's always going to be those people that comment and say things like, Oh, this is what's going to make it better. You have to do this and this and all these things and it'll make it better even though they have no experience of what it's like to have that illness. You probably shouldn't smoke, just saying. Um, I do this because I'm extremely stressed out right now. You say that but, in every video that you well, smoke Well, it's in. disclaimer, you know, don't smoke. Basically, it's just a lot of people, they think that they're being helpful, supportive by saying like, you can get better, or you, you can do this, you just have to push yourself and believe in yourself. This is what really, but, irks, it really irks me, okay? Because I've been sick for over five years. I know what my body, you know, can handle. I know what my body can't handle. I also know that in the past few years, I have gotten sicker. And with my illness, um, there's not a lot that I can do. The, uh, the treatment uh, options are very limited. They're very destructive. So, you know, ultimately, um, I can do music right now, I can do a little bit, I can do what I can do now, but it's not going to be like that forever, and that's why I'm trying to do it now, because eventually, um, ultimately, the disease will end my life, and that's just the reality of it. Um, but people that are, are out there and that are saying, you know, just, well, you know, you can just think away your depression, or or you can just exercise away your pain. Um, you know, there are some people who who can exercise, do yoga, do meditation. It helps quite a bit for some people, but there are also others who they cannot benefit from that kind of treatment whatsoever. So you have to look at these people case to case basis. You cannot make judgments based on one person you might know or your own personal experiences. You have to look at it from all angles and you have to consider everything. When you have like really extreme pain, sometimes even just sitting down or laying down, just everything hurts. I mean, um, even like wearing clothes at times when you have extreme pain. And, and skin sensitivity. Yeah, you know, if, if any fabric touches your body, that, that can hurt. You know, there are just so many things that people don't understand about these illnesses. I've also noticed, surprisingly, that a lot of people who do have autoimmune diseases are also kind of ignorant in the way where um, they don't seem to realize that every person, no matter if they have the same diagnosis or not, have different symptoms. Like one person could have lupus and be able to work and be able to do things, you know, and have flare-ups occasionally. And then there's people where it's so bad that they literally like cannot physically get out of bed without some sort of help. And it's the same thing with fibro. Some people, the pain is so bad that, you know, they have to be in a wheelchair. Like it, people seem to think that if you have the same illness as them, that they know everything that's going to make it better for you. When I first started getting sick, um, I used a cane for the first year or so because I could no longer use my legs properly. And um, as that progressed, despite my efforts to keep my muscles and to keep my legs working, I ended up um, having to use a wheelchair. And then from there, despite my efforts again, I, I'm in a wheelchair every time I have to leave my house. And even in my house, I can't 
function the way that I used to be able to function, and that's just the reality of the of the degeneration, you know, that happens within your body when you have, uh, you know, an illness like lupus or MS or, you know, anything like that. And that's actually a big reason why we need, like, a vehicle for the winter because um, I have to use a cane because I have issues with pain so I can't walk very well. And, you know, if he needs to be in a wheelchair, I can't push him because it's hard for me to walk. And it's not just about getting the vehicle, it's about what I'm doing with the vehicle. Um, you know, since I'm a musician and I'm recording an album, and I'm somebody who, you know, who wants to be a, a positive um, influence and a voice for people who are feeling the way that we've been feeling the last few years. You know, people that are, are, are giving up on their lives and, and feeling useless. There, there's so much ignorance and there's so many people out there who don't get it and who belittle us and make us feel awful. So, you know, my goal, educate and change that and show people that you can succeed. You know, even if, if you can barely get out of bed some days, you can still do it. It's just, it's rough. It's really rough. And all of the shit we've been getting lately, it's, it's certainly not making it any better. So, you know, the best thing you can do is do some research on these things. Talk to people personally. Don't make judgments. Just because a person doesn't have a... You know, conventional conventional job, job where you're paid doesn't hourly. mean we're not working. Faith is a writer. Faith writes for uh, a queer magazine, and I'm a musician, and I work harder than most people I know who work full-time jobs some days. Like, say, even if I'm not writing for a day or whatever, flare-ups and, like, you know, pain flare-ups, you know, weakness flare-ups can be so bad that even just getting out of bed is unbearable, and it's work in itself. And I mean, it's not every day, but on days... There are moments when both of us experience um, complete shutdowns in our bodies. There are moments where I collapse on the ground and I can't, I can't move. People think they're being supportive by saying, you know, like, I believe in you, but I can guarantee that people that are disabled who can't work feel worse about the fact that they can't work than you do. If, I could, if I could go out there and get a conventional job, I used to work a lot. If I could do that physically now, I would. But the only thing that I can do is music, production, writing, and gigging. You know, I, I sit a lot on stage, and it's because I have to. But I can do that because that's on my terms, and my body, unfortunately, dictates what I'm capable of doing most days. So many disabled people feel so shitty about their limitations because everybody else has something to say about it. Like, if a person can't go out one day, people are like, oh no, you can do it. You know, you just, you're just telling yourself you can't. And people think that just because you can't have a conventional job means that you you're don't want to work. Or you're or, not a productive member of society. Like, okay. Which simply isn't true. That's just prejudice. We do work. We just don't sit at a desk in an office. If you're someone who's able-bodied and you have you know someone who's disabled important to you know be encouraging but at the same time if they say they can't do something they can't do it if you want to tell them that they're strong and you're proud of them amazing but right ahead. Don't, judge don't, them. don't tell them things like you know oh you're just telling yourself you can't do it you know you need to push yourself harder because we push believe me every every day waking up getting out of bed that's pushing that we push ourselves every day to do, you know, the, the smallest of tasks that, you know, somebody able-bodied wouldn't even think twice about doing. So anyway, so that's my uh, daily video. It was a little bit heavy, but I'm going to try to make it a little lighter for tomorrow. Um, again, uh, subscribe to my website for uh, the free album, the 2011 release I did before I transitioned. It's, it's all for free, so go ahead, subscribe. I'll link you to my Tumblr, my email, my website, my fundraiser. Please continue to share my fundraiser. Um, we have to raise this money before winter, and um, it's yeah, it's it's been pretty difficult for us here in in Winnipeg um, with with the particular network we have going right now. Okay, so thank you for watching. Catch me again tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll have something really, 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 really fun to say. But I had to say this. We we had to. We just had to. So bye. Bye, guys.